Hello, hello. Welcome to Crafting with Claudine. This is the July edition of Stampin' Around the World. And this is a video blog hop. So when you're done watching my video, I'd love for you to go into the description and take a look at each of the videos that are linked underneath. As you get to each video, there'll be a set of links so that you can go through the entire um, video blog hop. So today I'm going to be working with the Round We Go die set and we're going to make some of these lovely little rosettes. I use uh, Charming Duck papers, Pretty in Pink cardstock, Basic White cardstock, and Peach Pie. And you can see I've already made several of these. And uh, these are the rosettes. I love how you can use the pattern paper and get all the, the lovely colors into the um, rosette. So I'll be making one of those. And then we also have these little um, layered flowers that we can make using this set as well. And we'll show you how to make some of those. And then we're going to take them and use them to make a scrapbook page. Let me put these all back in the box so that I don't have them all over my desk. So let's start by talking about the die set. It is Round We Go dies, and um, it has this uh, die that you can use to make the rosettes, and it does all the scoring for you. And then we have these... Um, two different pieces here that we're going to layer together. And we have big and small circles. Um, this one here is a little medallion. And then we have uh, shaped circles as well. We're not using any of these, but we will use all of those. Uh, so let's start with the rosette. I have two that I can make today. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. So, as I said, it will put all the, the, the scoring right into your um, paper that you've cut with the die. And you'll see one end is the full length here. And this one looks kind of like a, a tab or a miter cut. And we're going to start with that one. And we're going to fold that one down. So, I want this to be the paper that I'm going to use on the top side. So I'm going to fold this down. And then you just alternate on the score lines. And it takes two of these to make a rosette. So I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this is a little bit tedious to watch, so I'm just going to chat through it. Uh, this is July 2024. And we have a group of lovely ladies that, um, like me, are Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And they will all be doing um, a video blog post. And the theme this month is uh, Case Catalog. And I really wanted to do a scrapbooking page, but there weren't a lot of scrapbooking pages in the catalog. So I'm going to adapt a card to use on my scrapbook page. So again, we're going to take the part that looks like it's been mitered or tabbed and fold that one down and then just keep alternating. Um, so I'm curious if you would tell me in the comments, are you a scrapbooker, a card maker, or both? Um, I am both. Uh, I started as a scrapbooker many years ago, probably about um, 22 years ago, because I think it was when I was mm, actually longer than that, because my daughter is 22. And um, I started scrapbooking before that um, for my son. So as you can see, this folds really easy. All right, so now we've got the two pieces for the peach pie. And then I'm gonna do one with this one here. And I think I want to use this side up and see what it looks like. So I'm folding the, the tabbed end down 
and it's just alternating back and forth. Um, so as I said, I started off scrapbooking many years ago, 20 something years ago, um, and I did it for years. And then I took a break and during the pandemic, I decided that I missed my scrapbooking. Um, and so I started scrapbooking and then I signed up with, with Stampin' Up! in February of 2021, I think. And um, then really got into card making and I love to make mini albums and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So there's one more of these for me to get through, taking the mitered end and folding it down. These are really simple to make. Um, I love this die set because it gives you lots of options and um, you can make the rosettes. And I also was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if you cut one of these out of um, white and then use it to make a picket fence? That would make a lovely picket fence. So almost done here. So yeah, I've been doing Stampin' Up! for about three years now and um, I love it. I craft on a regular basis uh, every weekend and oftentimes in the middle of the week after work. All right, one more fold. Okay, so the next thing that you need is a circle to put underneath. And this is just an old scrap that I had. Uh, my circle is about an inch and a half. You can go bigger as well. Um, let me grab this. I'm going to give it lots of um, double-sided adhesive. You could use other um, means of putting adhesive on. You could use the liquid glue, but then you'd have to hold it for a bit while it all sets. So I am doing this. And I think actually I'm going to give it just a little bit of extra by putting some glue on there. Oop. So that one is ready for me to use. What I'm going to do next is to take one end that has the miter and one end that doesn't. I'm gonna put some glue here, some liquid glue and I'm going to stick those together. Oops, I just dropped my glue. Here we go. So just a little bit of liquid glue. Line these up. And then I just tend to um, push the whole thing together and hold it for a couple of seconds. And if you've got a little bit of glue that's seeped out, just go ahead and wipe that off like I just did. Okay, that's one end. And then I'm going to put some glue on the little tab again. And then I'm going to flip this around line them up again and then just fold it together like so hold it just for a few seconds hold it nice and tight so it can really bond and then i'm going to do the same thing on this one here So as part of being a Demon Up, Demon Up, Demon Up, <laughs> as part of being a Stampin' Up demonstrator, I have a Facebook group. It's called Crafting with Clydeine. And um, we are a small but mighty little group of about 70 um, paper crafters from around the country and around the world, actually. Um, many of the people I've met online, some I've met in person, and some I met online and then met in person, which is fantastic. Um, we hold, I hope, I have a group of ladies that I work with um, that, and we hold 
crops twice a year in New England. And so last November, some of the women in my group that I've met online came to the crop in person and um, we all got to meet for the first time, which was so much fun. Um, we do virtual crops in my group um, about every two months, depending on people's schedules. All right, so now that I've done that, I have a couple little bracelets. Remember those bracelets that you could expand and put on? So I, I don't remember what they're called. Anyways, make some of those. Now, what I'm going to do is you'll notice that one end has like a scalloped rounded edge and one is pointy. I would like the pointy edges to be out. So I'm gonna put them down on my, my um, table and I'm going to just kind of push it down so that I can um, have it spread out. Let me get this out of the way. Not quite ready for that yet. So if you put it on the table and just kind of press it down, you'll see that it will form your, your rosette. I'm gonna do that a couple times, get it used to being flat because it doesn't want to be flat. And then I'm gonna put this back under the camera so you can see it. I'm gonna do it one more time right over the circle that I had put the adhesive on. I'm gonna hold it here for a couple of seconds. And sometimes I like to just kind of go like this and really work that glue into the uh, surface of the fold. It doesn't have a lot to hook onto, so giving it a little extra time and a little extra push. And then I'm gonna grab another one of these. Give it a little glue. I was talking to a friend the other day. She happens to use um, hot glue to do her rosettes, which I think is a lovely idea. I don't work with hot glue all that often, so I chose to do it this way. I'm going to this time flip it so that my um, scalloped edges are down, and this one will have the scalloped edge on the outside. And start to form the rosette. Just for fun, I'm showing you what it looks like on the back side. I could use this one as well. Um, I like to figure out which side I plan to use first because then I can bury the mitered edge. But honestly, most people aren't going to notice it if you change your mind after the fact. All right, let's put this here. I'm going to push it down and hold it for a few seconds. Oops, don't push too hard. You'll flatten it just like I just did. All right. Oh, my goodness. That didn't go well. Get a little bit of extra glue there. And I guess I need to pay better attention to where that little circle is before I squish it into a rosette. There we go. I am over it now so I can see that that circle is underneath. And we'll try that again. One of the uh, issues with trying to do stuff like this on a camera is you're not always right above things so you don't see things because otherwise my head would be in your way. A little push in a swirl. Okay, I'm gonna put these off the side um, and actually I'm going to take um, I am going to take this little 
box that I have, my paper pumpkin. I'm just gonna put it on top of those while they continue to dry. All right, next I have cut out a bunch of pieces and we're going to make a couple of delayed flowers. So I have two different types of layers. Again, you can see that some of them have points and some of them are rounded. And so we're just going to go ahead and um, combine a few of these. So I would like to take my white one with the, the scallops and that's gonna go on top of my peach and I want to make it so that um, they are interspersed. Go ahead and give it a little bit of glue. And then I can take one of the bigger flower uh, circles or a little circle. I think for these I want to use a little circle. And I'm going to go with the peach pie center on this one. Hold that in place. And then next I've got one where the white has the points and the pink is the smaller one with the um, scalloped edges or rounded edges, however you want to call it, and do the same thing. And I want to give that a little swirl, which is a lovely thing when you're using liquid glue. You can reposition it. We've got a few seconds to work with it. And then this one, I'm going to give it the white center. Now these little things can be used for so many, so many different ways. You can use it um, to put on your cards. You can use it on your scrapbook pages. You can make a mini album and use them as decorations for that. You can do little ephemera clusters, so many options. Um, while I have them out, I just want to show you the little medallions that are created. And I think they're super cute. All right, my other ones are all dried up. And I'm going to add a center to these. So I have options. Let me see which ones we want to use. We've got pink center. So we're going to go and do them like this, I think. And for this, I'm going to grab some glue dots. So I have the unit. I wish I had bigger ones. And I'm going to flip this over and add some glue dots to it. right in the center. One more time on here. Okay, our rosettes are done, our little mini flowers are done, and with that, I am going to clean up my desk and then I will come back and we will work on the scrapbook layout. Okay, I have cleaned off my desk and am ready to get going on my scrapbook page. So as I told you, our theme this month is uh, Case the Catalog. Case means to copy and share everything. There are other definitions, but that's the one that I use and I've forgotten all the others. <laughs> um, 
I wanted to do a scrapbook page, but we don't have a lot of scrapbooking pages in our catalog. So I thought I would show you how I'm going to take this slim line card and use this as inspiration for my scrapbook page. And so we're going to use this to make a border for the scrapbook page and um, then we'll get going. Just as a, a visual, we have the round we go catalog, uh, the round we go stamp set that goes with the dies that I'm using. So you can get it as a bundle and save 10%. And we may pull in the happy birthday or hip hip hooray or something like that as a title on our scrapbook page. So I've done a little bit of prep work. We have two sets of paper that I'm using. We're using countryside lace and um, country woods. So this is from the lace uh, on the back side is more lacy and this one here is a beautiful denim and then we've got this gorgeous uh, wood grain. So I have done a little bit of prep work. I'm going to focus on one five by seven photo. So I have a double mat here. The white is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter and then the knight of navy is um, five and a half by seven and a half. And then I have a four by 10 and three quarters piece of um, the wood grain. And then this is just a quarter inch bigger. So four and a quarter by 11. And those dimensions came from the fact that I was using an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper um, for, the, for the mat. Now, I don't know if you noticed when we're cutting the um, the piece out to do the rosettes, you can if you line it up, you can have this cool um, piece that you can use on your scrapbook page. And so what I did is I took one of them. I started with a two by six, and I cut the piece out of the center, and then I cut a piece of white that's just barely smaller than that, maybe a, an eighth of an inch smaller and glued that on the back. And then the Knight of Navy is a quarter of inch, quarter of an inch larger. So it's two and a quarter by six and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and layer that last piece on. So I don't know um, if you like to scrapbook and you're looking at the catalog and go, hmm, there's not a lot of ideas there. I challenge you to put a different lens on as you're looking through the catalog and look for a layout that you think might work for your scrapbook page. All right, so this is going to be the general layout of my um, scrapbook page. I'm going to do about a half an inch all the way around on this here. So let me go ahead and do that. That will be my starting point here to set the rest of the page. So we've got that. And then <clears throat> we're going to put this one centered between the margin of this and the edge of the, the um, page. And then this guy, we're going to center between these two and line it up at the bottom. So I'm gonna start there. And there's really no rhyme or reason about whether I'm using uh, glue or double-sided adhesive. It just happens to be whichever one I pick up, I think. Okay, and then I am going to, though I guess I tend to, on the bigger pieces, use the double-sided tape. So I guess there is some rhyme or reason. I just hadn't really thought about it. Tuck that under, okay. And this one, I'm going to, like I said, center from left to right. I'm also gonna center from top to bottom, um, from the top edge of the paper to the top edge of this piece here. So now I have my foundation and I've played with my layout a little bit um, on a second piece. And what I'm going to do, let me pull this so that you can see it. 
it got a little bit messy as I moved things around. Generally speaking, I'm going to put the three rows out to top, bottom, and a little bit off center here on this one. And we're gonna have the smaller pieces that will um, kind of create the foundation for this. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. And I'm going to move those. And I think I'm gonna start down here with some of these smaller pieces. I'll get a general idea of where they're going. I'm gonna tuck that underneath a little bit. And we'll use this as a guide for placement because I want them to kind of peek out from underneath the rosettes. Little clusters. All right. This one's going to go off to the side a little bit and then back towards the center on this one. Okay, that gives us a general idea of where things are going to go. So I'm going to just lift up the corner to get some glue underneath and press that back down. And then this one I'm going to put there. So I just, little ones are a little bit harder to, to deal with. And I'm just having them touch a little bit to give a bit of continuity. Okay, we've got a good portion of our um, of our base down. And then we're going to go ahead and give it some glue on the bottom of this and it's overlapping a little bit each of the pieces. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Well, hello, Jack. My puppy has come to give me a little visit. I just want to move this a little bit, so I want to do it off center just a tiny bit. To enjoy a little bit of movement. And then I've still got these guys that can be used to add a little bit of interest throughout this here. dab glue there, little dab of glue under here, we'll tuck those under, can't get my fingers underneath, there we go, little glue, okay, so now we've made our border, and then down here, I wanted to put um, one of the flowers here to kind of pull the design through and a dot there. All right. So then let's see how this might work if I use one of the stamps on, on, on here as a title. We've got Hip Hip Hooray, Happy Birthday. If I use Hip Hip Hooray, then this um, page is very versatile. You can use it to celebrate almost anything, not just the birthday. Of 
question is what color shall I use? I know it, it's small. I think I'm going to do a little bit of um, add a little dimension here. Do that, and then we will line it in the navy night of navy. I'm gonna break my own rule. I don't have. I have not used this yet, so I have not seasoned it. I'm just gonna see what happens. Got the best image. Flip it over and try again. Just realized. Okay, there we go. Grab the night and navy. Get us a little strap going there. So you might be asking me, why did I choose night of navy when there's no night of navy in any of the flowers? Um, and there's none of this blue here, which I'm, I'm not sure what that is. It looks like it might be um, Misty Moonlight. Uh, ooh, and I have... I had a small strip over there from when I was cutting my paper. All right, bear with me, folks. Only so much room on the table. So this here is three inches. So I'm gonna go with three and an eighth. I'm just gonna do a small border on this. And then we've got half an inch. So I'm gonna go with three eighths. Just to give it a little itty bitty 16 inch water all the way around. We can see which one was. Okay, so this was the not so good side. Thank goodness there are two sides of the paper that you can use. Yeah, I can bring this page back. And it wasn't a very clean cut, so let me just trim that off. Um, if you run into this yourself because you need to clean your your groove on your cutter or you need a new blade, you can trim it off. Um, I usually just kind of run my scissors behind so I'm not changing the shape of the thing that didn't have a clean cut, but I'm trying to gather all of the, um, the loose pieces. Probably shouldn't have done it over my project, but it's okay. And then I think this will work very nicely by having it on this piece here with the border. Okay, so I think the last thing I want to do is look at my embellishments and see what I might do for a little bit of a little bit of pizzazz on it. So I have got um, the Iridescent Pearls Basic Jewels, which I got from my upline for my birthday last month. And so I'm going to put them on this lovely page. Using my Take Your Pick tool. And we can use some of these to give a little bit of Something, something, as they like to say. I'm gonna use a big one on some of these one inch size medallion type things. And I don't think I need to add any more layer to that. Okay, there you have it. Um, one 
scrapbook page. It is based upon this slimline card. So if I were to put it like this, kind of get the idea. It doesn't have quite as many of the um, rosettes and whatnot as the, the uh, inspiration did, but it gave me quite the um, start on my scrapbook page. I hope you enjoy this and um, we'll take the time to click on the links that are in the description below and go check out what everybody else is doing. I can't wait to see. Have a great day.